Meanwhile, the Academic Staff Union of Universities has described as miserable and unacceptable the latest offer made by it or to it by the federal government. ASU President Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke disclosed this in a statement on Thursday. The union is urging the federal government through the Ministry of Education to return to the new draft agreement of the 2009 Renegotiation Committee, whose work spanned a total of five and a half years as a demonstration of good faith. Well, according to ASU, quote, the major reason given by the federal government for the measly offer paucity of revenue is not tenable. This is because of several reasons, chief of which is poor management of the economy. This has given rise to leakages in the revenue of government at all levels. Well, there is wasteful spending, misappropriation of funds, and outright stealing of our collective patrimony. Asu believes that if the leakages in the management of the country's resources are stopped, there will be more than enough to meet the nation's revenue and expenditure targets without borrowing and plunging the country into a debt crisis, as is the case now, end quote. Well, it's six months and a few days now since university lecturers have been on strike. They're now demanding uh, to be paid for the months that they have been on strike. And the federal government says a capital no. Well, the question is now whether ASU should be paid or not. Mm -hmm. We have joining us uh, virtually the president of the union, Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke, to help us understand the offer made to the striking investor lecturers and the issues at stake. Well, joining us in the studio as well to look at the legal perspectives is Arise News analyst Frank Tieta. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Thank you both, gentlemen. I think I would like to begin with you, uh, Professor Oshodeke. Well, you listened to the minister today, and I'm sure you're abreast of what happened. How do you respond? He, the federal government is insisting no work, no pay. How do you justify being paid when you're not teaching the students? Thank you very much. Our response is no work, no pay, no pay, no work. Very simple. It's balanced. So that's our major response. You see, I was the minister today, and I thought that as a minister of education, and as a government, that he will come to the table to see how to resolve the issue in a giant based system. We are thinking of threats. By our academic standard, by our standard, we are not afraid of threats. Even during the military era, we are not afraid of threats. We will fight for Nigerian education system to be such that we will start having foreign students coming to Nigeria, foreign lecturers coming to Nigeria as Nigerian students are going outside. And Nigerian lecturers are good. That is what we want. Not coming to talk on TV with no work, no pay. So what? Let me tell you about the academics. As an academic, go and look at my condition of service. I have three lines of work. Teaching, research, and community service. All we have done is to stop teaching. So it's not as if we stop research and community service. That is two. Three. When we resume, we are going to start from where we stopped long ago. We are going to start there and bring up up to the present and continue. So all the work we have not done in the past, we are going to sacrifice our lead in the next two or three years to meet up those period to ensure that the student got quality education. But if the government wants to close down the system, it's left to them. I am really surprised that if the Minister of Education, who in the past was well quoted in the, in the, in the dailies, he had a, had a column in one of the newspaper, where he actually supported what we are doing, that the Nigerian University is not going. And it's coming here to threaten us with issue of no work, no pay. So what? If Nigerian University will be better off, if what he said we are sure that Nigerian University will be better off, so be it. Two, I, I expect to have come here to have quoted one or show evidence that they have agreed on one of, of the seven items we are talking about. They didn't mention on one item for which they are giving us anything that you can take to our member to, that can change Nigerian University system. He didn't talk about no work, no pay, about going to court. We are really not bothered. We have done this over the 1980 something till now, and we will not be bothered. If they want to kill the system, let them kill it. If they're not interested because they're not here, that's why. If they're children are joining the university, they'll not be saying what we are saying on the, 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 the media. So, Shodoke, that must really be heartbreaking for Nigerian students who have been at home uh, for six months now. Before that, it was nine months. When they hear from you that you cannot be bothered, that may be misconstrued, uh, you know, by the students and all Nigerians, as a matter of fact, the international community who are watching 
things unfold in Nigeria's uh, tertiary education sector. Uh, Frank Tiete, what do you make of this? Uh, I mean, uh, the Minister of Education, Ademo Ademo himself, has said uh, that the students can actually take ASU to court. Uh, you heard him say there that other unions, about five of them, have agreed to go back to school except ASU. What are the legal implications of all of this? Well, thank you. It's a question of law and facts. Uh, right. The position of the law is that no work, no pay, and that is by virtue of Section 43, Subsection 1 of the Trade Dispute Act. Uh, it's clear, and it's not a, a matter of option. It's, it's the standard that the law has set. Yes, there's a possibility of a class action against ASU, and that depends on whether ASU has impact properly on this strike or whether it's an illegal strike considering the provisions of Section, section 31, Subsection 6 of the Trade Union Act which was actually amended in 2005 to prevent uh, workers in the essential services sector like ASU from going on strike. Mm -hmm. So if they embark on strike, that already raises the issue of an illegality on embarking that strike, on that strike, and a lot of things can actually come out from that. We, we've litigated severally on these matters. The Supreme Court is yet to make pronouncement on that. So it's, it's, it's uh, not quite correct that uh, uh, the assertion by the respected professor uh, with regards to no pay, no work. The salaries end after work is done. And um, it is clear, as a matter of fact, that ASU has been on strike for months now. Uh, there has been there's Nigerian students have suffered, parents have suffered, and the entire Nigerian public is bewildered that there is uh, this strike that has been unending mm. doesn't seem to have any justification and that the lecturers simply use the issue of standards of education as a veneer for a call to increase their salaries. And this has been an unending uh, culture in the university system from the 70s, 80s, and all through the 90s. So when is it going to stop? So there has to be a time where the government has to make a form of disincentive for strikes now a strike has become quite lucrative for lucra mm. uh, university lecturers especially when they go on strike for whatever time it will take six months seven months in expectation that they will be paid in block we have opposed that before now because we, we it's it, uh, the moment that government pays us uh, like in 2014 when i went to court to challenge this uh, the minister of education for actually paying ASU for work that they didn't do. Uh, immediately, ASU, ASU was settled. Uh, the senior staff association of universities announced that they were going to strike. The, the, another union in the university system announced that they were going to strike because they know that whatever it is, they will get it. And okay. that it shows you how powerful unions can be mm. in, this, in this country and how much afraid government has been of unions, especially mm. a powerful union like ASU. Well, you make that point, and it rings the bell of what happened to Nigerians yesterday when a union shot plunge the nation yep. into darkness mm -hmm. uh, because of demands. But Professor Oshadeke, uh, when you say the government has not acceded to any of your seven demands, can you clarify? Because the minister said today that uh, demands were made, uh, negotiations have happened, five of the six unions are willing to go back. However, ASU has two contentions, one of which is this no work, no pay, the backhoe. Uh, so when you say they have not acceded to any of the seven demands, can you elaborate? See, you know, what we hear at this point is that people in government just talk. Can they provide evidence that they have, they have agreed on one? A written evidence they have agreed on one issue. You see, where we are in this country today is what the barrister had just talked about. When you go to other time, other country, in UK this year, the lecturer was on strike. The government interceded immediately and resolved the issue. Yesterday, the people in electrical, which affected were including those who are in power, when it affected them, they interceded immediately and resolved it. When those in, uh, in uh, uh, those who are involved in a uh, um, airline were, were planning strike, they got involved immediately and settled it. But when involved in education, the key to all of them, six months they didn't come to resolve any issue. Why? All those things I have mentioned affect them directly, but education does not affect them because their children are not here. That is the only reason. Two, what the barrister said is not very true. We have taken the system to even Supreme Court, our colleagues in Lori, when the first now they were sacked for going on strike. Remember, salary with head and they were sacked. And we won in the Supreme Court at that money. All the parts were paid to them. So it's not correct. Let it's not correct. So let's get it right. We have a Supreme Court judgment. So it's not correct. Two, we are different from other unions. If the government push us to the end, 
What do we do? We will resume. But we must start from 2012, 2022, 2023 session. 221, 222, 220. We are allowed to go. The student can go and register anywhere. I think we go on because we can't go and do the work we had, the bad, the work we had that accumulated, for which we are not going to be paid. That can go. That is where it is. You see, what we have in this country that we 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 come in here and try to we do things to see how we can oppress the ordinary Nigerian. If our universities are good, if our universities are good, just like every other university in the world. Because I had my friend saying that uh, we are just doing that for our personal reason. If our university is as good and competitive as a university institution, how come you don't have foreign students coming to Nigeria? How come you don't have foreign lecturers coming to Nigeria while we are flying away? That is the question we should ask ourselves. In the 70s, 80s, early 90s, you have foreign lecturers, foreign students in our universities. But today, because of what we have done to the system, the universities are dead. The primary school, secondary school are dead. Public. Is that what we want? Is that what the country we want? That we have universities that cannot compete with anyone in the world? A university cannot have a foreign student? I mean, we are busy spending 1.7 trillion naira, 1.6 trillion naira to pay school fees in that country. And we cannot get 200 billion naira to revamp our own. If we let down this guard, if we stop this struggle, I can assure you in the next few years, this situation you have today will be a minor thing. Because what it means, if you start paying school fees, 1 million, 3 million, 5 million are school fees to public university, where you have kids, the way they keep from that's going to do it 60% of Nigerian parents and their children cannot go to universities. And that is what we are talking about. And this is started in 2009, this agreement. We have reached five memoranda of action on how government will implement and they will renege and push us into a strike. And you think you can resolve this by saying, stop strike. We will not. Uh, uh, Prof, like let me, uh, very quickly, if you can. Only recently, when we had you on this show, you actually uh, said that everything that needed to be, you know, agreed upon, had been agreed on, all that was needed or required was for the federal government to sign. But when you say that, the, you know, that the government should go back to the new uh, draft agreement of 2009 as a sign of good faith, exactly what are you saying? Is it back to square one? Or where exactly are you now? You see, so that we also get the, 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 the formation of the right. In 2017, the government set up a panel to do this renegotiation. That panel was dissolved. And in 2021, that panel was set up, held by Musali Jabri. Their whole team came to us and we negotiated and reached an agreement, waiting for signature. They didn't come back to us in one year. In one year, they came back here again. With that, Nimi Brice as chairman, and they offered something to us, which we accepted, and they were going back to ask for permission to sign, only for we to hear on the paper all sorts of story by the agent of government, and they refused to sign. Three times they refused to sign. Three times they have agreed not to sign an agreement that was reached between we and their agent. That is the corporate crisis, just because they don't have any interest. In the past six months that we were signed, what have they done? Which country in the world will allow the academics to be on strike for six months without doing anything? Just in one country. See, I'd like you to weigh in. You heard everything that the prof had to say there. There is a distinction between unlawful termination of employment and being in employment and declaring and actually going on strike. Mm. The issue the Supreme Court has, is yet to decide on, uh, are, t are twofold. Whether the university lecturers, according to the Trade Union Act, are providers of essential services, and on that basis, they cannot, they are barred from engaging in strike, and whatever strike action they take a part in is illegal. And secondly, uh, in the case of on unlawful termination of employment that goes to the Supreme Court, mm. of course, the Supreme Court will give to the lecturers what they ask for, especially when the, uh, the uh, employment was declared to be unlawful terminated. But in this case, by virtue of a clear court, plain law, Nigerian law, the trade dispute act by provision of section 43, section 1, the lecturers should not morally, and in this case legally, expect any cobble for the time that they have been on strike. They, and, and the same thing applies to the employers. When they lock out, when they make it impossible for the lecturers to have gone to school, then they also cannot reckon that 
in any way to their uh, favor. And about, there's, a, there's a good thing about it. Mm. Subsection 3 of that provision says that only the Minister of Labor can actually resolve whether or not government should pay f uh, for the time that the mm. lecturers have not gone on strike. But the citizens are concerned. If you keep making strikes this uh, lucrative, you don't work, you, you punish students, you punish parents, and then you throw uh, the entire polity into confusion, and then get so well paid after six months, I mean, so somehow, somewhere, the government has to be decisive. Okay. And, and no, no, nobody should actually uh, be praised here. Mm. But uh, I think we should just follow the standard the law has set. Mm. And Professor Oshedeke, you paint a picture uh, as if though the government has not invested in the education uh, system. Uh, some figures ruled out by the minister today. He says... Uh, 2.5 trillion from TED fund has gone into tertiary uh, education in the last 10 years. While the universities, uh, no one knows what they do. They are internally generated funds. He also said under the Buhari administration, over 6 trillion naira have been spent in the education sector. So how do you respond to that? Uh, you get these monies, uh, no one knows what you do with them. Government is investing the much they can. You see, we also, I, I keep on saying this. We churn out things that are not correct. What was the budget allocation for this year? For education, less than 400 million, 400, 400 trillion, uh, billion across all the sector, primary, secondary, you beg. If you multiply that by 10, what does it give you? Does it give you 6 trillion? You see, we should be, we should be speaking with facts. And what quantity of this money goes to the university? What quantity of this money goes to the universities? Cut straight. The, question the six trillion is, is not for the year. It's not the budget for the year. It's that under the the span of this administration so far. Mm -hmm. So just to correct that, that's what the minister was saying. This, this year, in one year, they gave less than four hundred billion to education. This governor has spent how many years? Uh, less than eight years. If you multiply four hundred billion by eight years, does it give you uh, uh, that amount? Does it? So what I said, we should speak with fact. And two, I have this question. If they believe our system is good, that you have, I went to a, 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 a public university, one of the first general university, and they are using stove as bouncing burner. Stove. What would that happen in the world? Go to our university, we have the data. Students sitting on bare floor, a university undergraduate sitting on bare floor to have lecture, and we are clapping for the system. You, have, you go to a university, students are having lectures, and they are hanging on windows. Where do you see that in the world? And we are clapping. You see, I'm lucky that the legacy said that no, no court has interpreted that law he's putting. We also have the ILO. We are, we are, we are signing to ILO, ILO rules. We also have the ILO convention on collective bargaining. If you force your workers on strike, how do you force a man? You force a man on strike. You had an agreement with a man since 2009, and you refuse to implement it. The agreement you sign, and the, the lawyer is saying it's null. It's not. It's not important. We will call to pursue it. The lawyer, is not, uh, the lawyer is not saying that you know it's not uh, important. I yeah. mean, like Konwa, <laughs> Konwa, <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of the one of the <laughs> unions. Uh, uh, prof, if I may, that would be, that uh, prof, if you allow me, what is saying? Are the Nigerian yeah. children? Nigerian students, Nigerian parents are hearing them that we should not bother what happened to the public school because their own children are in the private and outside. Right. Well, uh, we, uh, we have to be able to Okay. Have you looked well outside? Before we run nobody out of time, uh, no, Prof. No, mm -hmm. nobody wants to check why we are on strike. Nobody is interested whether government implement what they agree or not. Nobody is not if I may come in, Prof, one of your unions in the university, Konua, they are saying, look, they're no longer in support of this strike, just like Lautech, uh, you know, lecturers. They're saying, can we go back to school while you do these negotiations? Instead of please, throwing away the you, baby I, with I, the bathwater. Please, I want to say this. If I hear the word Konua, I feel surprised that the press man would... Instead of Konua a union... What you call as common, I tell you, why is it registered? Two, Lautech, you, you prefer to look at one side. Lautech, there was this, there an online story, social media, that Lautech called us strike in the morning. And even the register came out and said it's not correct. But you prefer to quote the one, the, the one on the social media. I think it's unfortunate.
You can call the man, the, 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 the director of Lautech, and check whether they are on strike or Is not. Is the minister wrong when he says he has five unions and they're ready to go back to school except ASU? Are those other yeah. unions registered? Are they recognized by ASU, government? ASU, ASU is a union of intellectuals, Nigerian intelligentials. If others want to call out their side because they are whatever, it's not our business. We didn't go to strike together. Professor Oshedeke, uh, finally, yeah. just before you go, we do understand you are, you are meeting with the uh, Briggs Committee. Uh, when exactly are you likely to return to school? Uh, what assurances are you giving to Nigerian students at this time? Speak to them directly. That question should go to the Nigerian government. Well, Look at today. Is that what? The Nigerian government has spoken earlier today through the Minister of Education. That, so we're what? asking you that to what? speak. Well, you that had that we, have, that we, that we've been having that conversation for the last 15, 17 minutes. Let, let prof, what? What they should tell the Nigerian children, Nigerian students who are at home, what have they done in terms of rehabilitating our infrastructures, in terms of getting quality lecturer in the classroom, instead of having students, the student of, or the child of a, a minister, the child of a driver, and this thing in the same classroom, having hostess where the children will have, just like they have in Ghana, have they done those? But yeah, is, so Asu, is ASU mixing things up? It, it looks like the, as the days unfold, they are making more demands. Is that what's happening? Definitely, with the... ASU is appearing to be quite a complicated union, and it's understandable. It's not making the right kind of sacrifices that are needed to make the country move forward. It acts as if the Buhari administration, without standing being an, an apologist, it's as if the Buhari administration has been responsible for all the troubles in Nigerian universities. Whereas I recall, while I was in university, or University of Benin in 1992, they, these were the same issues that they had been, on, they went on strike for under Atahiru Jega, and then they've gone on successive strikes, and the same issues have been there, they all revolves around sal salary. I think for a country to move forward under this condition, under the circumstances, where this country is troubled on all sides sacrifices need to be made and we don't need to terrorize for that terrorize and terrify the polity by all of these complicated demands and then creating you know a state of uh, you know uh, hopelessness on uh, for our students yeah. as who needs to make the right kind of sacrifices they don't need to you know abuse the powers that they have they are so powerful and secretly the government feels really threatened by unions like ASU that can actually bring it down Take, for example, if Nigerian students were to revolt against the government because of the, the narrative that ASU is putting forward, the government will be sacked. That is worse than a coup. So ASU should re redesign, and of course, uh, the, the respected uh, professor and his colleagues know better the implications of what they are doing. And they shouldn't act as if they want to bring down the government. There is no alternative to government. And uh, we can work this out. It's a matter of resources. If government doesn't have, it doesn't have. Yes, there's a lot of profligacy. The corruption in government is also applicable in Nigerian universities. In fact, sometimes was in many of these uh, federal universities. So it's a, there's a level of contributing negligence to the degradation that is currently facing the educational system. And we need to come together and cooperate as a country to move us forward and to, you know, to leave this quagmire right. situation that we are in. Uh, in other words, everybody has yes, a yeah, share yes, in the blame. Share. The uh, Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, ASU president there. Uh, Frank Tete, Arise News Analyst. Thank you both.